Out with the old and in with the new. This is the Baofeng UV17R. This is a replacement radio for the Baofeng UV5R. Now the good thing about this radio is that it is sub $30. Currently on Amazon, they're going for around about $27 or $28. Brand new from Baofeng. You can see here the FCC ID, which is printed on the side, 2AJ. GM-UV17, so you can look that up on FCCID.io. But let's have a look and open it up and see what you get. Well, the first thing is, is the user manual, and it is relatively comprehensive. It is about 37 pages long, and it's all in English. It is relatively easy to understand. It's actually got some of the pictures of the buttons that are written on the front of the radio, so that's easy to follow along. And here is just a couple of things in the manual that show you how to get started. The first thing that you probably go to is page 23 there, repeater programming, and it shows you how to basically program it up. So that's probably the first place that you're going to be going to. You can read the manual online, I'm sure. This is the radio. This has a new look and feel compared to the UV5R. As you can see there, these are two different kinds of radios. The UV5R is a lot smaller. Uh, the UV17 is obviously a lot bigger there, and you can see I haven't even put the battery in there. Again, the FCC ID, they've put here the amateur radio as well, and the battery that comes with it is a 7.4 volt 1800 milliamp hour, which I think is the same as the UV5R. Yep, the UV5R uses 1800 milliamp hours as well. So it's quite a sizable battery difference there. This battery is a little bit different though. It's not just a clip in type. You have to put it in and then un uh, do up this thumb screw here at the bottom. Well, when I say thumb screw, it's not really a thumb screw because I need a screwdriver to do it. I can't use my thumb. So the radio comes with this charging dock. I noticed that the cable, the mains cable, goes straight into the charger. It's not like a DC jack where you can plug your own in. I think that one thing that I really like better is the ability to be able to plug in your own um, wall wart or maybe even a USB if you can charge it off five volts. But nevertheless, this is what you get to charge it with and uh, the radio simply just sits in the charger like that. And it looks pretty robust. It's actually got two, there's a little bit of a difference. The UV5R has only got one LED at the top. The UV17 has two dual LEDs, and these look like bigger LEDs too. Oh, they're bright. They are very, very bright. Let me turn off my, turn off my light. So that kind of gives you a bit of an indication of how bright the LED is on the UV17. If I switch over to the UV5R, so the UV5R is definitely not as bright with just its single little LED. And you might be wondering, oh, so what? It's an LED light, what's the, the point of that? Well, I can tell you that it does come in handy because I've been out in the bush before and I've needed a light to see where I'm going. It's been pitch black. I've been trying to find my way back to the car. Um, and I needed to use my lights on my radio and it comes in very handy, especially when if you've got your mobile phone, your mobile phone torch might go flat very, very quickly. So um, it's good to have a bit of a backup, but they're nice, uh, quite bright LEDs, so that's good. The standard two pin connector for programming and also for your speaker mic, which I'm sure is going to be the headset one. Yep, headset one, I usually, don't really care too much about these. The only thing that these are really handy for is to keep the cable if you want to make a programming cable or something. Uh, overall, it actually feels really nice. I've got to peel off the screen protector. One thing I did notice too here is on the top of the radio, if I can get it in focus, there's a little, I would call that a little GPS symbol. And there's nothing in the menus to indicate that there's any kind of GPS available on this radio. It's just interesting that there's a little symbol there. So if any of you know what that actually is, let me know in the comments below. Welcome. Frequency mode. Oh, that's a different talking lady. The antenna that comes with the radio is this little whippy type of one. The UV5R has the solid antenna, which I don't really like because, you know, if you hook that on something, you might break it. This little whippy one's looks like it's a lot better. I always recommend to make sure that you get yourself something that's a little bit better. I've been using either the signal stick antennas that you can get from signal stuff or also um, maybe a Nagoya NA771 or something like that which uh, operate a little bit 
better viewers of my channel will notice that this menu actually looks relatively familiar from a different kind of radio. Um, just all the normal stuff in here, CT, CSS, transmit, scan CT, CSS. So this will do a scan for any CT, CSS tones on repeaters that might output them or for those who are using a CT, CSS tone and you're not quite sure what it is, you can do a bit of a scan to see if you can find what it is. Uh, it also scans DCS tones as well, I see. Uh, memory channels. How many memory channels does this thing have? This says it's up to 999 memory channels. Confirm. What does the Roger beep sound like? Power on message, you can have the logo or the voltage. I might just do the Confirm. voltage because that gives me a good indication of how much battery I've got left. This is one of the radios that has one of these stopwatches. My version of radio is running version 1.11 firmware, hardware version 1. This is the audio quality of the UV17, listening on 2 meters. 12345 VK7HH. One of the problems with these radios is the uh, low transmit audio, so let's just see what it sounds like, and I'll use my all-star node, which I use to do audio tests with. A VK7HH testing audio test 12345 into the Baofeng UV17. Audio level is pretty good. A VK7HH testing audio test 12345 into the Baofeng UV17. The audio level is perfect. It's not overdriven. Uh, it's also not too low, which is a common complaint with some of these, depending on which one you get, the audio level can be a little bit low. So that's passed that test quite nicely. If we just compare the two screens too between the UV5R and the 17, the UV17 is a much nicer, cleaner looking screen. It is color screen. A little bit more modernized, I guess, is probably the word. So what do you think? Baofeng UV17 or the OG, the Baofeng UV5R? Let me know in the comments below. Let's TX and we get 4.83 watts. So that's what I would expect from a five watt handheld. There's only two power settings, high and low. Low is 2.46, so two and a half watts, about halfway. 440 high power is 4.35 watts. 440 low power is 1.73 watts. And to answer the question, does it transmit um, outside of the bands? No, it doesn't. But I did notice that if you hold down the eight button and turn the radio on, you get a version a number with FCC. Let's do everyone's favorite test. I'm here on high power now. Let's have a look and see what our spurious emissions look like. I am on a center frequency of 300 megahertz with a span of 350, so that should show our fundamental, our second and our third harmonic at least. And that does not really look all that good. There's our fundamental, there's our uh, second harmonic and our third harmonic. The second harmonic is about 10, 10, 15, maybe, 15, maybe 18 dB lower, 18 dB lower, and then our third harmonic, another uh, 10, so 20, 30, maybe another 30 dB down. There's our fundamental on 440. Let's go up to the second harmonic on 880. And there's nothing there. So this is kind of lending me to think that this radio has uh, filtering for UHF and above, where it's clean, but not on VHF. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they have to pick a frequency for the low pass filter in these radios and rather than having selectable filters for VHF and UHF, they only put one filter in so they roll off the frequency probably like above 500 megahertz or something like that, which is fine for UHF and you don't get any spurious emissions at all, but at VHF obviously it's going to pass everything through, the first, second, third, fourth harmonic through pretty much um, unimpeded. So. Uh, yeah, that's probably something that they can improve on. There is an affiliate link in the description below if you want to pick up one of these UV17s from Amazon. Like I said, they're currently around about $28, so pretty, pretty cheap. The Baofeng UV17 is a radio designed for beginners or those who just want to get started an everyday type of radio. But what about if you want something that is hackable or, in this case, also open source where you can modify it to unlock all sorts of different features? Well, the answers on how to do that are revealed right over here.